What's up, everybody? We are back for not another topless video. It has been quite a bit since our last one. I want to say it was our top best Sonic games, top 30 for 30 years. I can't entirely remember because it has been a while, but we're back with a new one and we figured, you know, we did the best Sonic games. Let's do the worst. We kept it to 10, though, because uh, honestly, doing 30 was a bit much. It took a while to record. It took a while to edit. It was a while. So I told our resident Sonic expert, Shadow, as he likes to go by, let's stick to just 10. Now, how did we determine the top 10 worst Sonic games? We went, well, Shadow went to the Sonic Wiki slash Sonic News Network Internet Movie Database, which I didn't even know had reviews for video games, Wikipedia, and Jobaware.net. He took the worst of the worst, and he averaged them all into a top 10, or I guess low 10. Now, some games were not considered, such as Sonic at the Olympics 2020 Arcade, Sega Sonic Problem Shop, Sonic Athlete, Sonic Ghost Shooting, because they are, they're just so rare, overall rare, that there's, there's no reviews. There's practically no reviews on those games. So we threw them to the wayside and we didn't even consider them. Now, before we get truly started with the top 10, how did we consider what is a Sonic game? Well, anything on the Sonic News Network, the Sonic Wiki, whatever they had in their list of Sonic games, we considered it a Sonic game. So, let's get started. Coming in at number 10, which was released in 2014 for the Nintendo 3DS, coming in at an overall rating of 4.7, I'm assuming this is out of 10, is Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal. Now, upon looking this up myself, a lot of the same things came up. Sluggish pace, bad dialogue, unfunny humor, repetitive gameplay, and just the word mess came up a lot. I'm surprised this is only number 10. At number 9, with an overall rating of 4.625, is Sonic Blast, which was released in 1996 for the Game Gear, as well as in 1997 in Brazil for the Master System for some reason. But this game was absolutely destroyed for bad graphics that were so distracting that it made the game itself horrible. The colors were muddy, the characters were too big for the tiny ass scream of the game screen, screen of the game gear, which if you're my age, you most likely had a game gear, you know that screen was like this fucking big, actually about this big. It was tiny as hell. And a lot of reviewers actually actually think this game is what ultimately killed the Sega Game Gear. And while I never personally played it, just looking it up a little bit, I can kind of, I, I agree. At number eight, we have a tie at 4.6 overall rating. First is the 1991 arcade game released only in Japan called Waku Waku Sonic Patrol Car. Now, what the fuck is this game? Well, Sonic plays a police officer who gets into a police car, and you have to avoid traffic while driving this car until Dr. Eggman shows up, at which point you have to avoid him throwing bombs at you, but you start chasing him because he does a traffic effect. Fence. He commits a traffic offense. Very, very bad Eggman. And eventually you jump out of the car to hit him, I guess, a couple of times. And Eggman explodes. That's the end of the game. <laughs> it, it sounds really stupid. Now the other number eight, also at a 4.6 obviously, is Sonic the Hedgehog's Game World, which came out for the Sega Pico, which what the fuck? is the Sega Pico in 1994 in Japan, and it came out here in America in 1996. Now, I had to look up the Pico. I had never even heard of it, and I grew up with a Sega. Now, I guess Pico was a little educational system kind of thing for young kids, and Game World featured 
13 mini games in the form of like a storybook that it teached kids problem solving. It only featured Sonic, Tails, and Amy. And I didn't even know Amy was around in 94, 96. I thought she didn't, I thought she showed up in like sometime in the 2000s. But this is why Shadow is the Sonic expert and I'm just the entertainment. At number seven, with an overall rating of 4.45, is the 2006 Sonic the Hedgehog, which came out between 2006 and 2007, depending on the system, for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. Now, this game I have played because, again, Shadow is a big Sonic fan. So, he, of course, had this game. I played it, and I, you know, personally, I fucking hated it. It was funny, looking it up a little bit for this, you know, the demos were absolutely stunning. Like, people, like, reviewers were saying that they that the game showed so much promise. But as soon as it came out, oh, people fucking hated it. From keeping the Sonic Adventure style of gameplay, which people fucking hated, to the absolutely frustrating camera system, which I can tell you firsthand was horrible. Oh my god, it caused me to die so many times because the camera is just all over the fucking place. Most of the time, you don't even know where you are. But also, the loading times were horribly long. The level designs were just lame. There was glitches all over the place. And a lot of people saw the game as proof that the Sonic the Hedgehog series has truly, had, had truly lost its way. Coming in at number six with a rating of 4.4 was Sonic X, which came out in 2005 and 2007, depending on the region, for the Leapster. And like the Pico, I have no fucking clue what the Leapster is. By 0507, I had graduated high school and I was, I was on the bigger and better systems, which apparently the Leapster is an educational handheld console, so it's obvious why I never had it. Now, the game itself was based on the anime series Sonic X, and it followed Sonic and Chris Thorndike, whoever the fuck that is, as they tried their best to save Tails, Amy, and Knuckles from Eggman, all while solving math equations. Now, upon reading You Have to Save Your Friends, okay, cool. You know, it's, it's a standard video game, but the second I saw math equations, I can see why this game is fucking hated. At number five, which came out in 1994 for the Sega Mega Drive and the PC, is Wacky World's Creativity Studio, which had an overall rating of 4.3. Now, this game you chose from six Wacky Worlds, and you placed animated stickers all over the place, and you cre and you created like a 2D diorama. Um, uh, I, I don't even know how to really describe the game, but I'm going to let this little factoid describe it for me. Wacky World's Creativity Studio is the only Sonic-related Mega Drive game not to be included in the Sonic Mega Collection, nor Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. That's how bad and stupid this game is. At number four, with an overall rating of 3.8, we are getting down to the threes here, came out exclusively for mobile phones in 2008 was Sonic at the Olympic Games. And you had a choice of four characters, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy, and it was a one-button command game. So compared to Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games for the Wii consoles, you know... <laughs> It is a huge, huge downgrade, and I can see why people hate it. Coming in at number three, with an average score of 3.3, .3, is Sonic's Schoolhouse, which came out for the PC in 1996. It's funny, when I looked this up, it said it's first-person perspective akin to Doom. And then it said, but the main difference is that you're solving spelling math, and reading questions. Um, well, the fact that Doom is a fucking first-person shooter game where you're, like, destroying demons, that's a pretty big difference. And 
Sonic's not even a playable character. All he is is a guide. Like, you don't even play as Sonic. Just the fact that Sonic is in this is considered a Sonic-related game. It's like, what? At number two, with an overall rating of 3.25, is Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, which came out for the Wii U in 2014. Now, I just said Wii U. Do I really need to continue this? The Wii U was a failure of a system. It, I mean, it, uh, it paved the way for the Switch, which is a phenomenal system, but the execution of the Wii U was just very, very poor. Anyway, why is this game hated so much? It had repetitive level designs, very dull puzzles, glitches, boring-ass combat, a shitty camera system, which something a lot of so modern Sonic games is, has problem with, bad dialogue, and it was just unfunny. Something else that comes up a lot for Sonic games. All right, here we go. Number one. What is the worst, absolute worst, Sonic game of all time? Well, overall rating, 2.4 for the Sega Pico, again, from 1994, Tales and the Music Maker. Now, what made this game so bad? Well, it, it was the same kind of thing, like, uh, game world in that it was a picture book form like you know you did something it turned the page you did something it turned the page but all this game was was tales teaching kids how to make music and at one point he's inside of a pinball machine for some reason and somehow that teaches somehow again somehow that teaches kids how to make music being inside a pinball machine um i i can see why the Sega Pico was a failure. Did you enjoy the video? Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos on collectibles, gaming, movies, and more. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.